Today we will be using a slightly different Mr. Negative deck with destroy cards. Mr. Negative reads, on reveal, swap the power and cost of all cards in your deck. That means you really want to stuff your deck with a lot of low power cards. That way when they get flipped, they now have higher power of course and become very cheap or free. Those cards include Cassandra Nova, Iron Man, Arnim Zola, Null, and Mystique, who can copy both your Iron Man and your Zola. Our first destroy card is Carnage, and he is followed up with Venom. Does Shang-Chi count as a destroy card? For the purposes of this deck, he does, definitely. There are a lot of big power threats running around, and he is just a very strong card because of that. He also has synergy with Null. We have Psylocke, who helps you play Mr. Negative on turn 3, and Ravona serves that same purpose. If you are missing one of those cards, Zabu also works. Ideally, Jane Foster is in your hand when you play Mr. Negative, because then you can play her on turn 5, and she will extract all of the new zero-cost cards you have in your deck. When this deck works, it works very well and can just completely overpower your opponent. And when it doesn't work, you retreat for one queue and queue up into the next game. Before we get started, I've created an alliance. So if there are any viewers that want to join, this is going to be somewhat of a more casual alliance. Just get more than a thousand points a week and do your best. We're here for help. You might see some of my upcoming decks that I work around as I get eight cubes during testing. So there's another potential benefit to joining. Otherwise, good luck. Okay, next up we are against Matrix TF. We have Mr. Negative and Jane, which means our ramp card, our ramp cards of Psylocke and Ravona are less important. Now it is important to not draw into our zero power cards, which we are doing in a hurry. There is still nothing to do. Black Vortex is nice. There is our third zero power card. This is how playing Mr. Negative goes. <laughs> So, do not sweat. I will end up playing Mr. Negative right. I, in this case, want to get some stats on the board. So, I will just play Venom left. I typically advise against just playing for stats on the board. But in this case, we just have a lot of power especially with Mr. Negative coming down and Jane. So hopefully this Black Vortex, I'm gonna snap before I do this. Hopefully this Black Vortex card is good. Chances are on my side that it is good. We will definitely draw into Arnim Zola because of Jane. And so I will be able to double this six cost card and get that to go into Sanctum and also into Kunlun. It is a hey, Galactus, a five power, six cost card. Ugh. So I will play Jane here because my next turn will be Iron Man over here. I think the five should be able to win middle. Okay, who cares about that? It's still one power. That is good enough. There's the free Arnim Zola. And this is the Null and Sean synergy. So if I had a zero cost Null, then I could play Sean and then double that up with Zola or get a bigger Null and you can just really pop off. But unfortunately we drew a lot of our zero, zero power cards. That will happen a ton playing Mr. Negative. So get the Iron Man down here, the Zola here, that should be more than enough to win middle, the five, because the most they could do is a Jeff middle. And this goes to 10 plus 5, 15, 30 power. So ultimately this might come down to a tiebreaker. Will it come down? No, it won't come down to a tiebreaker. So I like where this is headed, they move the Nova over there. Wind. 
The storm is over here, and that should be more than enough to win. Yes. Way more, because just the Iron Man's enough. So a very easy win. You saw how I snapped, and that was because I saw how... I hope you all got to enjoy that before I it even clicked that oh Galactus is gonna go off in Sanctum because they're not playing in Sanctum. Duh. So how about that? Some uh surprise Galactus gameplay in your Mr. Negative game. I I was interrupted from breaking down this game. There wasn't too much to break down, quite frankly. You saw how Zola works. You can get down another big power card in Iron Man and just totally win. Uh, but uh, Galactus will Galactus. Okay, next up we have Snap, Crack, Pop. Onslaught Citadel is kind of nice location for us. We have a decent amount of ongoing cards. Three or two and a half if you include Mystique, I guess, as a half. We do have Psylocke into a turn three Mr. Negative, which is what this deck wants to do. We are facing an Arishem deck. I have all three cards. These are the three God Hand cards you want. And then you pray that your zero power cards stay in the deck until next turn when I can play Mr. Negative. I'm going to snap into this I'm going to play Psylocke left. I can always move cards because of New York, unless of course they shut that off. But I am just very well positioned with my hand and advantaged, so that is why I'm snapping. And that is when you should snap, when you have an advantage. And if the advantage changes because this location is something dumb, then I'll retreat. So it is not something dumb. So I will play Mr. Negative here. Yes, sure, why not? Mr. Negative here, I did draw into another zero power card, but that means I have the Iron Man and Mystique combo, which I will be drawing into. You're a Mr. Negative Arish? What kind of crazy nonsense are you up to? Playing Cassandra before somebody Mr. Negatives actually helps them? Playing after is fine. So if I play here, I'm going to get a Sentinel in my hand. So I will have five cards. I will play Jane. That is fine. So in turn, I wonder if they have Jane. They do have a blue marble. So there is a very, very big Cassandra Nova. We drew into Iron Man, okay. I will play Jane over here. Unfortunately, I will not be able to play both Null and Zola. That shouldn't matter. And the reason I played Cassandra right is just to give me options. I will be able to move her or I can just leave her. And maybe that's what I end up doing. I am playing Jane over here just to give myself an option to move cards. They are doing the same thing. But honestly, with this Iron Man, that should just clean up Onslaught Citadel. I also could double up the Iron Man, which I think is the route I want to go. So I'm going to move Mr. Negative middle, move Cassandra middle. Because, I mean, if I, if I Zola the Cassandra, that's a whole heck of a lot of points too, because she goes up to plus 11. So is that what I do? Do they have Sean? They do have priorities, so they'd be able to Sean me. I think this plays around Sean better. So get the Iron Man down, get the Mystique, and then the Zola. If they Sean me middle, 
I should still be able to win. I think. <laughs> so this is what we will go with. Having both Iron Man and the Mystique Iron Man left is just a lot. And I, I, unless they have their own Iron Man, but a Mr. Negative Arishem deck, that is fancy. They did have Sean. Look at that. We sidestepped Sean. <laughs> we sidestepped. We sidestepped him. Mystique wins this left on our own, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. So, I, this is what I was kind of thinking. If they had Sean and they play a middle, my Iron Man goes to eight points middle. So, that is what I my thinking was. So, if they played Sean middle, we have eight middle. And so they would have to play another card middle, but then they also wouldn't be able to play their Mockingbird right, which means it goes into a tiebreaker because it's 0-0 zero, zero over here because they ha still had to win middle. So that is why I played this out the way I did to enforce the tiebreaker. They need to abandon right to be able to win middle or I just win outright because I win these other two lanes. So that was my thought process. That is why ultimately I decided to Zola the Iron Man because I felt like it played around more of what my opponent might do. Okay, next up we have Notaboa. Time Theater gives us two Shans. We have a Cassandra, but we are going up against a normal deck. We do have Mr. Negative. If you play Mr. Negative on turn four, you really want to have Jane Foster in your hand on five. These are some really crappy locations. We will just get the Cassandra down now. Okay, a discard deck. So you, you might need to expect Hella, which means that Gambit might come back and absolutely massacre what we are trying to do this is going to be a retreat game because i do not have jane i do have two of my I zero power reborn. cards so if i draw jane here that would be more ideal i do not i mean it's just an iron man followed by they're nuking their whole hand And they have a big apocalypse. Do I just... I think I might YOLO this. Just I play the Sean... Right? If they play two swarms, that is plus six. So they get to 15. So it's just a Psylocke and a Sean. And say, are you playing your apocalypse here? Now, if they do the subversive move... That is to just play a single swarm here and play the apocalypse left, but they might be scared of my Sean, of my Iron Man, I mean. So for one cube, one extra cube, I'll, I'll roll the die and see where they play. That is exactly how they played. They avoided my Iron Man lane and just a juicy, juicy Sean. Shit. <laughs> Fantastic. So we uh, we used the Victory. knowledge of our opponent's deck that we had. We knew they had a big apocalypse. Most players will play their big cards into Space Throne to make sure they solidify that. Let me not even mess around with this Iron Man nonsense. And so you can kind of juke them out, which is exactly what I did here. Okay, next up we have this is 14. Subterranea means I retreat. <laughs> but honestly, if I draw into Mr. Negative, that's somewhat okay, but I also need to really get cards out of my hand. 
because Jane would draw all of these cards that I don't want. Of course I draw Arnhem. I have so many... I have three rocks in my deck. Oof. How did you play Cassandra early? You must be a Arishem deck. <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, okay, I know my game plan here. That is to... Zola my Venom. So I will do that. Ugh, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Oh. I do have Sean for the Cassandra. So that is nice. Do I think I have right one? I will just play out the Mystique, since I won't be able to Zola there. Okay, I have many targets for my Sean. If I play Venom and then Ravona, I could snap last turn to move the Bob. Okay, but now moving the Bob might put him middle. <laughs> Which I am not a fan of. So I think I don't snap and just play Sean middle. It's kind of risky because two is not a lot. Yeah, and just hope they don't play I for... Believe in heroes. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't snap, unfortunately. Because I just needed them to not fortify middle. So that is why I snapped, because two is not a lot of points. Everything beats two. So that is why I did not snap here, because of the Bob. Otherwise, I would have wanted to snap earlier. Definitely don't, that is not, this is not a game you last turn snap and alert them that you have the winning line. Don't do it. Just take your two cubes because you're going to get them. They think middle is completely safe. I'm playing some kind of potentially Mr. Negative deck, some kind of weird destroy. They don't know what I'm up to. So they might not suspect Sean. So don't alert them to that and don't snap last turn. Just play it and take your two cubes and be happy that it's more than one. Okay, next up we have Jab. We have what is known as the God Hand. We are not going up against Arishem. The first location is Vibranium Mines, then Starlight Citadel. I'm going to snap because this is just good draw luck we have. And so in that case, I definitely want to be snapping early so I don't tip them off as to what my deck is about and they're more likely to stay, which they have. Now, I do not know what deck my opponent is running. So there is a risk there. I also didn't know the third location before it revealed. That's also a risk. But this game is all about numbers and math and I trust the experts and the experts say that you should snap if you have a good hand, and especially if the first two locations are n not really that negative, and they're not, because especially with Vibranium Mines moving. So I think I want to get down Cassandra now. I will play her here because Vibranium Mines will change, and I want to leave left open for a... Iron Man that I Zola, or a Null that I Zola. There's the cloak to move back the dagger. They're gonna put up a lot of points. They really are. Oh, like Hellas is what's uh, the location, because cloak keeps that, which is actually good because I do not want to play over there. So, of course we get down Jane Foster Thor. That will bring out my null only, but that is fine. 
and then it is just where I want to position the power. I don't think they thought through the potential swap, or maybe they did and were willing to roll that that die. But if that was the case, then they should have played Cloak Middle because of Dagger. And you don't want to move Dagger left if your end game is Heimdall. And this looks like a very straightforward move deck. They move Dagger there anyway. What in the world? Ah. I was gonna say, what is going on? So it might be a flurry of activity. And I cannot interact with any of it. That is fine. I believe I want to double up the iron... I don't know the math here, so if somebody is better at that, and I don't really feel like calculating the math, is it better for me to double up the... with Mystique? Is it better for me, better for me to double up the Iron Man or the Null? It, it, in my mind, it... My mind always tells me to double up the Iron Man just because it's a multiplier of power. So that is why ultimately I go that route. I'm not going to have a lot of power middle though, honestly. So maybe that's where I put the null. I feel like I need a lot of power middle. Oh, I can't play Zola and... Okay. Okay. So, I can't play Mystique, so why am I even questioning that? <laughs> so, that is, this is what we will do. Get the Null. This should be enough. I'm gonna lose when I have the God Hand. Here we go. Let's see it. Let's see me lose with the God Hand. And we know this isn't Heimdall. Go left. Beautiful. Now, what is this magical card? Oh, why was I even sweating? <laughs> this, this was way too easy. The dagger went the wrong way. Did it matter? I am. And we did pop off with the god hand. I am Iron Man. The Iron Man flipped, the null flips. We have 34 middle. If their dagger ended middle, or right, it would have been 21. They probably would have beat us. I'm pretty sure they would have beat us. So how this person probably should have played is to, uh, after the dagger moves out, you play Ghost Spider middle. That guarantees you have moved the dagger again, and it's not a dead card, essentially. Because they ended up playing hard for left when... We were abandoning left, so it kind of just dovetailed right into what we were doing. So this is how the deck works when it all comes together. You see, this is the last game, so it's very uh, infrequent. But also, I like to think that I was able to do a decent amount of winning and gain a decent amount of cubes. So I usually don't show stats, but uh, I think I will show the stats. So let's get to the wrap up. Okay, so I have the stats displayed on screen right now. For some reason, I have a winning record with this deck. Do not expect that. Please don't expect it. It felt good while I was recording. During testing, my win rate was definitely below 50%. This is just a small sample size. The thing I do want to highlight, though, is the cube management. So I, I was up 13 cubes over nine games. That's more than a cube a game. A game. That's fantastic. And the reason for that is... I really excelled while I was recording at snapping and retreating. It was masterful. I didn't include all the games, of course, but I was very proud of myself at how I was snapping and retreating and navigating these games. And I excelled at this because I am familiar with Mr. Negative decks. It's a pet deck of mine. I like Mr. Negative decks. They're very fun. So I've used them from time to time and I'm familiar and the snap lines are very, and retreat lines are very clear. Did you have Mr. Negative or did you not? Especially on turn three and then with Jane Foster. So I highlighted some of that while I was playing games. And you see you can be positive cubes. That's what I want to draw attention to. Be positive with your cube gains. The other thing I want to highlight with this deck 
is that Mr. Negative decks are very malleable. You can swap in and out cards as long as they have low power. Just swap them in and out to your heart's content. This deck that I have pulled up right now is the deck I used to get the Cassandra Nova variant. The reason I like this deck is Kang is another pet card of mine. I love his effect. I know he gets talked down on a lot, but put respect on his name. Put some respect on my name. Put some respect on it. He is so good at snap equity. So that is Kang's true purpose. I'm a huge fan of his, and he fits very nicely into Mr. Negative Decks, of course. I also would like to thank all of the people who have decided to become members of the channel. It's a huge help. I really appreciate it. I don't take any of this for granted. This YouTube journey has just been a quick rise for me, relatively, uh, a handful of months. And I appreciate everybody who watches to the end of the video. I appreciate everybody who shows love, leaves comments, likes, dislikes. Whatever, however you interact with the video is fantastic and fine by me. I'm doing this for fun. I'm doing this to help people. I'm doing this to entertain. So as long as you're watching, I'll keep making these videos. And now, time for that bonus clip. Okay, next up we have three minutes of playtime. We are getting their one and only game today. How fortunate. Great Web is always a little annoying. Sakar is definitely annoying. So I will just get Ravona down, I guess. See what gets pulled. Oh, that's nice. Well, we ducked the Shadow King. That is even nicer. Glad I did not play into the unknown. I think I can get down... Do I get down Psylocke now? No. Because I can just play Iron Man into the Great Web. And then hopefully their card gets pulled so I can Zola the Cassandra Nova on turn 5. I am curious what deck this is though. Bounce or move? I cannot tell. Okay, this is kind of unfortunate. I will play Iron Man mid. I cannot double it up with Mystique if I want to play the Zola. Or maybe I roll the die, because I could play Zola onto... on left anyway. Hmm. I am Iron Man. Is this a Heimdall? I think I snap into this. I have a clear target with Zola. Oh, but everything moves. Ugh. Nah, eh, we'll do it. They nobody snapped. So I'll I'll see it through. The Great Web's gonna mess both of us up, but also the Great Web kind of favors their deck. Maybe if it pulls the torch we can and we draw into Shang Shi. But that is a Okay, that won't happen. <laughs> the one in four chance we draw into Sean. I mean, I don't know what to do. So this is what we're going to do. Snap. We are going to snap, and then I'm going to play Kang left. I have priority, so it doesn't matter. And let's do the Kang snap. This was very, the Kang snap was super effective in Deadpool's diner because the stakes were so elevated, but with on ladder, on ranked, and in conquest, the stakes are a little less. So you won't get as many Kang retreats. Victory. And there we go. I got to show a Kang snap and retreat. This is the real value of Kang. That if you get later in the game and you don't want to see the game out. I was if without Kang, I would have retreated. They had a lot of power, but I don't know where their power is going. And with Great Web, I don't know where my power is going. I would have retreated. So if that's the case and you have Kang in hand, slam down Kang and get free cubes. That's exactly what I did this game and it worked to perfection.